Compliance then. Um, nobody likes the word compliance, do they? Particularly if it's down to them to ensure compliance. It's Fred. Nothing to do with me. It's Fred. So I want to talk about compliance for a little bit, which invariably gets me into trouble. Um, but uh, some of the things I want to talk about then. CE marking. Yeah. CE marking. What is CE marking all about? And of course, we've all heard the jokes. <coughs> could explode. Chinese export, etc., etc. But what is it? And why is it important? Safety. Safety with retrofitting. What do we need to do? What do we need to consider? Performance. So although not obligatory from a safety or regulations perspective, but what other things should we consider when carrying out um, retrofit and upgrades? And then finally, warranties. We've already spoken a little bit about warranties, the lovely murky world of warranties. I'll just uh, end on that bit there. So let's start with um, CE marking then. So what is CE marking all about? Well, of course, we see CE marks on just about everything, don't we? And it um, indicates that the manufacturer has checked that the product meets EU safety, health, and environmental requirements. And it indicates that the manufacturer has checked that that product complies with EU legislation. So really what it's doing is it's saying, well, if we put a CE mark on the product, then the manufacturer has done their due diligence in ensuring that product meets all of the EU health and safety and environmental requirements. Okay, here's the rub. Self-certified. Nobody actually comes in and checks that the manufacturer is looking at the right standards, <laughs> or the most up-to-date standards, that they're carrying out the right tests, that they even carry out the tests, so it becomes a little bit difficult. And when it comes to lighting, there's actually quite a lot to understand. There are quite a lot of tests, and there's quite a lot of technical information to get your head around. And I always remember um, a customer talking to me, it was after a, an event a bit like this, and he was saying, I'm really confused because I've just installed some lights in um, a scanning area in a hospital. And all of a sudden, all the display equipment on the scanners has stopped working. He said, but when I took the lights back out again, they started working again. <laughs> Radio frequency interference. And this again is, I guess, coming back to the point that Graham was talking about with drivers this morning, is you pay what you get for, you know, you pay what you get. <laughs> and you know, when it comes to CE marking, there is an awful lot to understand. For example, radio frequency interference, harmonics, immunity, electromagnetic compatibility, then just the basic safety requirements as defined in BSCN 60598, fire hazard testing, hot wire testing, glow wire testing, restriction of hazardous substances, low voltage directive, it goes on and on. We as manufacturers have to do quite a bit to ensure that our products are, um, well, that we can put a CE mark on those, um, on those products. So what, what can you do? Well, one of the things that you can do is ask a manufacturer for a declaration of conformity. Let's see the whites of the eyes of the manufacturer. Let's see if they are actually prepared to put into print the standards that they have used and, importantly, the product that it relates to. So do ask the manufacturer for their declaration of conformity. And that might be quite interesting as to the response you get. But the reason that I'm talking about this, and specifically with retrofit and upgrade, is that the minute that you modify a luminaire, you void any C marking or safety certification. As soon as you change an element of that luminaire, 
you've changed its use and you void any CE mark. And that's actually quite important. So how do you make a retrofit or a modification safe? And safety is important. <laughs> it's important to the installing contractor, first of all, that the retrofit is safe for them to install. That also it's safe for the end user who may have to service and maintain that luminaire through its life. But also that it's safe to the members of the public, of course, as well, that may be able to come into contact with that luminaire or touch that luminaire. And therefore, any retrofit or upgrade or modification should really re-go through the CE certification process. Certain tests should be carried out to ensure that that luminaire is safe and suitable, or the retrofit is safe and suitable. And of course, again, one of the ways you can do that is by asking the manufacturer for their declaration of conformity. Now, I, I guess I'm picking on the LED tube a little bit again here, but of course, what we see in the marketplace are these LED tubes, and of course, these LED tubes in their own right are CE marked. But just because the LED tube is CE marked doesn't mean that when you put those into a light fitting that all of a sudden your light fitting becomes CE marked. It doesn't. Because invariably when you use an LED tube you have to modify the wiring inside the light fitting to some extent. Whether it's to completely remove the driver or modify the driver or put a a, a, a link in where the starter canister used to be, whatever it might be. As soon as you do that, you then void that CE marking. So although the LED tube is CE marked, actually the whole product should be re-CE marked. Does that come as a surprise to many people? Yeah, there's a few nods there. And of course, it can go wrong. <laughs> And this is a simple case of the installing contractor not following the appropriate installation method. And in this case, uh, when installing the LED tubes, the contractor had forgotten to disconnect the control gear from the circuit. And consequently, the incorrect electrical conditions were supplied to the LED tube, which just sat smouldering on the ceiling. Fortunately, there was no further damage to the building and it was just the light fitting and a bit of blackening around the ceiling uh, was the end result. But the, the, the situation could have been much worse. So safety is very, very important. CE marking of the total and final retrofit solution is an absolute must, as is good installation instructions. Moving on to performance then. So as well as safety, which of course is paramount, what else do we need to think about when carrying out retrofit and upgrades? Because let's be honest, the driving factor behind most retrofit and upgrades is energy saving. That's most of the reason, isn't it? We're trying to save energy. And quite often I worry that the big factor is trying to save as much energy as possible, but actually forgetting all of the other important parameters as well, such as colour temperature, colour rendering, the distribution of light, and also quite importantly when it comes to retrofit and upgrade, emergency lighting. So colour temperature, is the colour temperature fit for purpose? Or is the, or has the, is the colour temperature of the retrofit uh, suitable for the application that it's going into. We see it quite a lot, I think, walking into different buildings where retrofits have taken place and all of a sudden you walk into an area that's six and a half thousand K and you think, why have they chosen this? Colour rendering is even more important, ensuring that we can see the colours in the environment. Again, depending on the application, might be a healthcare application or a print production facility or something like that is the colour rendering properties of that retrofit solution, again, suitable for the application. I know Les has already touched on this, but the distribution of light 
is also very important. And as we all know, an LED produces a very different photometric distribution to a fluorescent tube. An LED emits light in about 120 degrees um, field. So what happens then when we start putting this light source into a light fitting that wasn't designed for that light source? Who remembers these things? Good old Cat 2. Lovely luminaires. Cat 2. We use a lot of Cat 2. I'm just about old enough to remember Cat 2 as I came into lighting. Cat 1, Cat 2 and Cat 3. But what happens if you put an LED into a product like this? Well, we did it. So on the left there is the correct distribution and on the right is what happens when you stick an LED into those optics. Well, some of you will point out, but yeah, look, the LOR's gone up. Happy days, even more energy savings. But the reality is, I mean, look at those peaks that are coming out at about 35, 40 degrees. If your spacing is such in the environment that those peaks line up, you're going to go light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, and end up with striping in the space, which is not um, going to be ideal. So it's important that when we're carrying out uh, a retrofit and upgrade that we understand how this is going to alter the photometric properties of the luminaire and we carry out necessary calculations to ensure that that solution is going to be fit for purpose again. And I also see quite a lot that when retrofit and emergency retrofit um, and upgrade is carried out we forget about emergency lighting don't we? That suddenly becomes an afterthought. And we, of course, have quite a lot of integral emergency uh, luminaire products in our buildings. What happens when you start trying to put an LED tube onto a maintained luminaire? Not a lot is the answer. <laughs> and we need to give this some extra thought and consideration. But a couple of other things we need to think about is does the solution conform to the necessary safety requirements as defined in 60598-2-22, which is the specific standard related to emergency lighting? So as well as the retrofit uh, solution complying with all the normal safety requirements, does it then comply with the emergency lighting requirements as well? Has the solution been photometrically tested with the retrofit kit in? Do we know how that retrofit solution is going to perform in emergency situations and has calculations been carried out to ensure that we're still going to get our emergency light levels. I suspect in a lot of cases probably not. A lot of people will go, that's an emergency fitting, we'll just put an emergency fitting back there, happy days, off we go. But of course 5266 does define quite clearly that in the logbook that is handed back to the client, that emergency lighting calculations are included in there to ensure that um, the client is understood as to the emergency light levels that are going to be achieved. So when carrying out retrofit and upgrade, if it includes emergency lighting, then as well as all the normal tests, we need to make sure it's photometrically tested and we need to make sure that this upgrade is not going to impact on the ability for the emergency lighting to do its job correctly as well. Warranties then. Well, it's not really for me to stand here and say what manufacturers should be doing in terms of warranties, but we are starting to see some pretty crazy things. I go one better than you, actually, Graham. I've seen a 25-year warranty um, in the marketplace. <laughs> but as always with these things, the devil's in the detail, isn't it? What's in the small print? What is the manufacturer actually warranting? And it's the bit where you get 15 million pages that you never really want to read through. But actually, we all should, because there's quite a lot of detail that can be hidden in there that's actually quite important. For example, is the warranty on site or return to base? Is somebody from the manufacturer going to come out to site and mend the luminaire, or is the client expected to take the luminaire out of the ceiling, package it up, and ship it back to wherever it came from? 
And of course, in this day and age, that could be anywhere on the planet, couldn't it? Does the manufacturer clearly state what they consider a failure? I think this is quite a big one, actually, that a lot of people miss. With LED technology, then there are quite a lot of different failure modes of the product, such as how many LEDs have got to fail before the manufacturer considers it a failure. How much light has got to be lost from the product before the manufacturer considers it a failure? Or does the manufacturer only consider a failure once there is no light being emitted from the product at all? And I think it's important that this is established because if you put a brand new light fitting in and after six months, 50% of the LEDs stop working, don't know about you, but I think I'd be pretty upset about that. But does the manufacturer actually consider and recognize that as a product failure? But unless they state it in their warranty terms, it might not be so clear. Also, are there any limitations on burning hours? This is another one that seems to be quite popular. Oh yes, we'll offer a 10 year warranty, but then you can only use your light fitting for 3000 hours per annum. Right. So that's actually a 30,000 hour warranty rather than a 10 year warranty. And again, depending on how many hours the installation is, then that, or how many hours the, the lighting works in the installation, then that could be a, a big factor. And of course, is the warranty for the complete luminaire? Again, I've seen warranties where, yeah, five year warranty, but it's actually only relates to the LED module. The driver's only covered for 12 months. But again, it's not immediately clear. And of course, does the manufacturer have the finances and the ability to honor those warranty obligations as well, should something significantly go wrong with an installation? So it's a case of due diligence, really. And of course, one manufacturer's five-year warranty is not necessarily the same as another manufacturer's five-year warranty. So just like Graham said, when we see those years, it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. And we should all check the small print to see what's behind it. OK, so in conclusion then of the things that I've covered, when retrofitting, the solution must meet all necessary EU safety standards. The solution should be re-CE marked and retested where needed. Has the solution been tested in line with EU directives? Has the manufacturer issued a declaration of conformity and CE marked the final solution? Does the solution meet the needs of the space in terms of light output, light distribution, color temperature and color rendering? Modifications to luminaires should only ever be carried out by a competent engineer. And the LIA actually has some pretty good guidance on this. I don't expect you to write this down now, but as we said, you will get a copy of these slides. But if you click that link, then the LIA have published two technical statements, 14 and 15, which covers uh, retrofitting um, luminaires. So if you are doing or involved in a project like that, it's well worth clicking on that and having a read of those documents. If emergency falls into the retrofitting, then again, all of the points that I've covered, is it compliant? Does it meet the needs? Has it been photometered? Do you know how that emergency product is going to work? Is it going to achieve the light levels that are needed? And finally then, with warranties, do understand that detail. One manufacturer's five-year warranty is not necessarily the same as another's. Thank you.